My name is Richard Huxtable. I'm Professor of Medical Ethics and Law and Director of the Centre for Ethics in Medicine at the University of Bristol. And the centre was established back in 1996 and over the last two decades we've undertaken a range of activities in research, in education and of course in engagement. And a good deal of that work has been around the ethical and legal issues arising at the end of life. So very big questions like do we treat or not treat and when do we treat or not treat? Should we, for example, allow assistance in dying? And related questions about values, how important are choices, how important is relieving suffering, and indeed what is the value of life itself? As researchers, what we're concerned about is coming up with a theory or a solution that's coherent, that is consistent, that's elegant in a way, but people's views and people's opinions and people's lives are messy. So in the last two decades or so, we've engaged with the public and professional audiences in a variety of ways. And those ranged from the things that you would ordinarily do as an academic, so presentations and workshops, and we did some of that regionally, some of it nationally, and also through more interactive, hands-on activities. So we worked with and ran workshops with the Science Centre here at Bristol, at Bristol, involving school children. And additionally, and really a flagship programme of engagement activity, we worked with Bristol Museum. And the museum put together two very large exhibitions that indeed attracted in the region of more than 50,000 visitors looking at the issues around the end of life. And on top of that, we ran an also oversubscribed public debate specifically looking at the issues around assistance in dying. So although these are seen as quite difficult conversations to have, there clearly is an appetite to have even those difficult conversations. People working in this field are already inclined to, to work with others and think and take on board others' opinions and points of views and perspectives. That's really largely what it's about. I had some trepidation about talking to the public about my research. I mean, you're, you're sort of scared that you're going to say something that somebody's really going to get terribly cross with. And, um, but in fact, I, 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 I came away with a very positive view of public engagement. Um, the public are genuinely interested in, 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 in listening to what you've got to say and in engaging in a, di in a dialogue when, when there are sort of disagreements or questions. I think the future of public engagement is not something that we do at the end of research once we've finished, it's going to be part of what we do and a lot of what we're doing in the centre is trying to work that public engagement into the research process itself. It's not an abstract academic endeavour, it's about people's lives and, and, and a community. There are certain things that, of course, experts or so-called experts in ethics and law can bring to the debate. They can inform about particular values, how these arguments work. They can tell you how different laws work in, work in different countries. But ultimately, it does need this big conversation. We do all need to get involved in the discussion so that we're shaping healthcare, shaping law in the right way for all of us.